Now, since we have learned about vector addition and vector subtraction, we must judge our abilities now to solve the problem with the help of the question on our screen. Let us read the question first. Two vectors, P and Q, have magnitudes of 8 meter and 6 meter respectively. The angle between them is 60 degree. Determine their resultant P plus Q and the difference P minus Q. So you can see here P and Q are both displacement vectors and the magnitudes have been given to three significant figures uh, so that we can give the answers also up to three significant figures. Between them angle is 60 degree and the resultant P plus Q and difference P minus Q have to be found out in both magnitude and direction. We should never forget the chapter of vectors and we must find a quantity in both magnitude and direction. So, let's try to visualize the question here. Uh, suppose this was the vector P and here is the vector Q. I just show it like this. And the angle between them is 60 degree. So, let me write it. This is the vector P and this is the vector Q. I have just joined them tail to tail so that we have got a common point. And you can construct a parallelogram that is the first condition of uh, applying parallelogram law. We have to be able to draw a parallelogram here. And the angle between uh, these two vectors, we might call that theta. This angle is 60 degree is given. So we write down the data here first for ourselves. P, the magnitude only, that is 8 meters. Q is 6 meters. And the angle between these two vectors that I have taken to be theta, that is given as 60 degree. Now what we do next, we construct the parallelogram and then draw the diagonal to that to the common point. So we just construct the parallelogram as you can see in dashed lines, the construction only. And the resultant of P plus Q, that is P plus Q, that is called vector sum also, the another phrase is vector sum, that's given by this red arrow, that is the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through the common tail of P and Q, which have been combined. So this is the uh, resultant, and I might call it, well, let me call it P plus Q, because they are asking in that notation. So P plus Q is this. So... And let's also assume that P plus Q makes an angle of alpha with one of the combining vectors P, right? So uh, to find out the value of P plus Q, we have got a formula. So let's recall that formula. If P plus Q is the resultant, then P plus Q being vector, the magnitude of that, this is the modulus symbol that says magnitude, is given by the formula, you can recall now, square root of P square, that is the magnitude of P plus Q square plus twice PQ cosine of the angle between these two vectors. That is this formula. We have already done it before in vector addition. So next step is to put the values of these quantities which are known to us. So again square rooted we have got, I'm putting the value of P here along with the unit that's important. You might even write uh, the meter unit outside, but here I'm writing the unit inside uh, to be on the safe side. The magnitude of Q is not 6, that is 6 meter. So I just put that in bracket and then squaring that. Twice P, now the P is 8 meter, then Q is 6 meters, and we have got cos 60 degree, right. Now you can see this is the square rooted, the whole quantity. Little bit of calculation that you must do yourself and confirm that up to three significant figures because the questions were given to three significant figures. So confirm that this value is coming out to be up to three significant figures, 12.2 meter. So that is the magnitude of the vector sum or resultant P plus Q. Next we go for finding the direction of this P plus Q vector, this red arrow, that's important because it's a vector quantity. And we have defined that in the figure, the angle made by P plus Q, 
with one of the component or combining vectors p is called alpha. So in that case, we have one more formula that says that tan alpha is given by, I have told it before, and see that once again, if the angle made by p plus k with p is taken to be alpha, then q comes first, we get q sine theta, let's see this pattern, the way it's coming, q sine theta, that is, divided by p plus q cos theta. The way it comes, the order of coming has to be kept in mind. Let me emphasize once again, if the resultant makes an angle of alpha with a vector p, then q comes first, q sine of the whole angle theta between p and q, divided by p is coming just singly, alone, the one with which p plus q is making that angle alpha, and then plus Again, the other vector q comes and a cos theta. This uh, order of coming must be kept in mind by practice. You can just have confidence. Now, let me put the values. They are all given here. The value of q was given to be 6 meters. Then we can write sine 60 degree, the angle between p and q, divided by p that was 8 meters. And then again I write Q is equal to 6 meter and cos of 60 degree. So this is what is the value of tan alpha, alpha being the angle made by P plus Q with uh, the vector P. And once again do the calculation yourself and show up to three significant figures. These value is coming out to be 0 0.472. Just verify the result. I'm waiting for a moment for you. And going further, you can show that by consulting the table or the calculator, the value of alpha for which it comes, you can write like this. If you have got access to a calculator, that's fine. Otherwise, you could leave like this, uh, tan inverse function, then 0 0.472. And that will be a perfect answer if you don't have access to a calculator. And if you do have, just verify. This angle is coming out to be to up to three significant figures, 25.3 degree. That is the final answer. So you must see that the value of P plus Q was found since it's a vector in both magnitude and direction. The resultant P plus Q is the magnitude is 12.2 meters directed at an angle of 25.3 degree with the combining vector P. That is the complete answer of this first part of the question. Now this was the first part of the question where we wrote down magnitude and direction and highlighted them. Since you are doing problems of vectors for the first time, make it a habit of writing and finding magnitude and direction both. There's a tendency initially to just focus on magnitude, forgetting about direction. But remember, almost all questions of vector, they ask you about a quantity. You have to find and write clearly both magnitude and direction. Now in the second part of the question, you can see that we have asked for the difference P minus Q. And we have learned the technique of subtraction as well. Let me see it for, for a moment, although I'll be going to a different page for that. When I say P minus Q, that actually turning out to be, it is, I said, the subtraction P minus Q is coming out to be P plus, P plus, you are adding vectorially minus q, minus q. Now in such figure you can see that of course p remains as it is, but uh, we can see here briefly that if this was the q vector, then definitely the minus q must be this one. Let me show it, juxtapose it side by side. The one I have got now is moving here, that must be minus q because q was this vector and minus q should have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So that is my minus q that I'm moving now. So I must go for a subtraction where I just add up this p and this minus q. Let me write it here briefly. This is my minus q and the addition must involve the parallelogram law construction where p and minus q becomes adjacent sides unlike the first part of the problem. We shall do it separately in a fresh page. Hello students. You got a glimpse of our video lessons through this small lecture. 
we have hundreds of lectures like this one covering various topics of advanced school level and intermediate physics in our website. They are exhaustive and often accompanied by elaborate diagrams to make concepts even clearer. They are taught with passion and sometimes with a bit of fun. So at the end of the lesson you have a commanding grip on the subject and you are ready for the board and competitive exams. Subscribe at physicsacademyonline.com to access video lectures of highest standard on various topics of physics.